Right, here we are. What's up, everyone? My name is AJ Writes Crypto. Welcome to the show today. Very excited to get it off the ground. Uh, we're going to talk about a meme coin launchpad. Uh, we will uh, FOMO, FOMO Bull Club. We'll have that in you know the the second end of the show. We got a lot to talk about today. A lot of news. You know, this weekend has been really interesting. I actually was looking at, took a deep, long look at the market Thursday, Friday, and realized, you know, a lot of momentum oscillators really starting to turn around, getting that curvature in the volume, uh, curvature on the RSI, and, you know, and, 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 I, and I said, you know, I think that, you know, we're going to see a reversal in the market, um, you know, Sunday night, Monday. And sure enough, we woke back up. It's really good to see Bitcoin over 70,000. Of course, you know, we put in that that local high. We put in a new all-time high, actually, not a local high, an all-time high. And, uh, you know, everyone gets really excited. Then the second we start to turn around, everyone says, oh, yep, that was the top. Yep, yeah, that was it. You know, we're, we're, we're crashing down forever. Here we go. And nope, not the case. I feel like, you know, what we experienced, uh, you know, the past couple of weeks or whatever was, you know, very healthy Correction, charts just can't go up one way forever. They need to breathe. It's just another step on the staircase. And and I, and I feel like, you know, as we kind of go into the having, will there be corrections? Will there be blood that hits the streets? Yes. But I do feel like overall, um, you know, right now, I still have a very much a bullish sentiment towards um you know, crypto, Bitcoin, top 100 crypto, meme coin crypto, um, and in all the sectors collectively, it is a good time to be in the space without a shadow of a doubt. So, thank you all for being here. So much. For be thank you all so much for being here. Make sure you smash the like button um, and retweet the space space early while we are just getting it off the ground. Do want to do a brief market overview here. I want to say that Bitcoin. Right above 70,000 at 70,100. We got Ethereum over 3,500 again. Uh, BNB just under 600 at 578. Solana at 188. I might be thinking about taking along the Solana back to 200. What I want people to understand is that, you know, we put in our local highs a couple of weeks back, right? And now we've come down. Well, for, for, well, with ICP being like the exception, not the rule that has put in a higher high for all the other projects, like the, the local high that we put in, like not talking about Bitcoin, but the altcoins, the local high we put in a couple weeks ago, that level now becomes a target. That level is now a target. I really want you all to think about that while if you are considering any leverage trades moving forward here. I'm uh, going to take a quick look at the gainers and the losers as I like to isolate that volatility and try to find the coins that are moving to try to get a trade in. Uh, the top five leaders in the top 100 are Aptos. Uh, dog whiff, uh, we got that, got that meme coin second leader. Love to see that at 321 dog whiff. I uh, got a nice bag of that one, which I got in earlier, but I'm still happy to hold it. We have ICP at $19. We have beam and fetch, uh, uh fetch.ai. That is a killer project. And in the losers, we have phantom, uh, down about 9.8%. Interested to see that Phantom has one hell of a roadmap lined up this year with the Sonic upgrade coming in spring. Uh, you know, I, I am uh, always have liked the Phantom ecosystem. Um, you know, there was a stick cup and handle on that one. I caught around 40 cents. Uh, that has been a big winner, big winner for the community here. Uh, we have Toncoin down, a cash network, Caspa and Floki down about 6% as well. So there you go for the gainers and the losers. I do want to talk crypto i do want to talk uh you know meme coins all coins all the things but i have to address the elephant in the room uh right now in the crypto world the new the big news story that broke today is kucoin kucoin you know i'm not, i don't want to spend too much time on this but I, I have to talk about it it's on my mind i have to talk about it uh this has been coming for a long time this has been coming for a long time i remember i was at uh decentraland uh, in Miami, like well over a year ago, and I had a very large influence. They're not going to drop names, but a large influence said, "Dude, AJ, I know you're on Ku on KuCoin. Make sure you get off all your money off of KuCoin. Hey, the crash, the crash is coming. The crash is coming. KuCoin, KuCoin's going down." And um, and and I listened to him. I listened to him. I took all my money off KuCoin, and you know nothing ever happened. Nothing ever happened, and I and I just kind of knew in the back of my mind, like you know, maybe one day. And I know it's like nothing crazy yet. I uh, you know, for people outside of America, it might not mean much. They did put an article out on Coin Telegraph saying that KuCoin says that the user assets are unaffected, but basically, what has happened? The DOJ 
you know, so the KuCoin founders, I'm going to read this from this article from BlockWorks. The DOJ accuses crypto exchange KuCoin of skirting anti-money laundering laws. Um, so KuCoin founders Chun Gan and Ki Tang were each charged with one count of conspiracy to violate the U.S. Bank Secrecy Act and one count of conspiracy to operate an unlicensed money transmitting business. Neither have been arrested, according to the DOJ, the Department of Justice. Uh, you know, basically, they're skirting some anti-money laundering policies. Uh, and the DOJ, uh, DOJ alleged that KuCoin was able to transmit more than four billion dollars of suspicious and criminal funds and receive five billion dollars from operating in the shadows of financial markets quote end quote so you know this is this is a really big story i mean i know that american crypto isn't all of crypto but you know i this i have been waiting for something in this vein to to happen to kucoin it has been rumored for a very 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 long time and and, and it kind of you know it i do kind of raise my eyebrows thinking like you know is this is this the only you know kind of gray area exchange that we're going to see targeted uh, you know, is is this the first of many, or is this one like specifically outside of the bounds? I don't know. I just kind of want to open up, have a conversation about KuCoin, and then we'll and then we'll keep moving. I got my guy Joa on stage with me. Joa, it's been a while since we've talked. We need to catch up. How you doing, man? And what are your what's your take here on the KuCoin story? Any thoughts? Hey, Jay, good to see you. Um, look, KuCoin's another what? Binance. It's yeah, of course. There's there's money there's of course this thing these kind of things happen if you look at the traditional world it's funny how they they hold a different measuring stick right like deutsche bank got caught doing a bunch of illegal stuff too but they didn't go after the ceos and the founders and everyone else right this is what i don't understand why is crypto held to a different standard yeah criminality should be charged but then do it for the banks too don't give them a free pass which they get all the time Right? No one gets charged. It's the crime, and then they can't point the finger at who's responsible. But here, they can't point the finger at who's responsible, but they go after the CEOs. I, I don't get why we're held at a different, by a different measuring stick. I really don't. But it's good to get criminality out of the system, to be honest. Um, will the same thing happen as Binance? I mean, Binance was huge news, and the market went up afterwards. So, you know, I think the more we, we clean criminals out of the system, the better. Not saying that they are, just saying there could be. Uh, just this typically happens with large financial institutions. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you. It is, I don't know, you're right. We are certainly held to another standard. Uh, you know, kind of the people at the top, like, you know, what we've seen with CZ, what we've seen with FTX, you know, that that's kind of has been the standard and it's not that way in traditional banking. That's certainly frustrating. And I agree, like, you know, this is the sort of thing that, I mean, we, we all want adoption, right? That's what we all talk about. Adoption this, adoption that. Well, we can't have adoption if if there's, you know, this many, like, quote, bad actors. Not saying they are, not saying they aren't. But I'm saying that, like, there, that we, there is going to be a time in crypto where, you know, the... The things that the government can't control will get weeded out over time, and 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 I, and I feel like a lot of us aren't going to like what that looks like. Looks like so we're going to hum and haw, but at the same time, I, I feel like it is the right thing to do. Especially, you know, I I don't really know exactly uh, the true story here. I'm sure there's a lot more behind the curtain at KuCoin, but uh, it's, it is a bummer. It is a bummer. I know a lot of people use that exchange, and it's kind of like an, a, a larger conversation because, like, you know that. Uh, you know, KuCoin kind of had like a, a sort of not really KYC program. I mean, used to be able to log in to KuCoin in America without a VPN. Now you'll get shut down, uh, you know, without a VPN. And and I know there's a lot of other exchanges, not going to say any names that we can use, but, you know, you have to have that VPN on. And uh, I, I'm just wondering, like, you know, how long that, that's going to last. Uh, we have Marshall Hayner put his hand up. Marshall, how you doing today, man? What are your thoughts? Pretty good. Hey, AJ, how's it going? Hey, everyone. Yeah, you know, seeing this news today wasn't a huge surprise for me because we saw the news with Binance. I actually made a prediction in late 2022 uh, that we would start to see some of this stuff. But if crypto is money, then eventually it's going to get regulated like regular like money, right? And so in the world of banking, in the world of finance, you have to have anti-money laundering, you have to have anti-terrorism, 
you have to have these programs, you have to essentially have an anti-money laundering program in the US, in most other parts of the world, Nigeria, uh, Europe, pretty much anywhere you go in the world, there's uh, laws around anti-money laundering. And so if KuCoin uh, knowingly evaded that, they didn't register, they didn't do all these things, of course that's going to happen. Um, the kind of the tricky part is how do you how do you reconcile, for example, non-custodial wallets in the whole crypto world with all of the existing AML regulation? And I think over the next couple of years, we're going to see some pretty interesting stuff. I think that you know we are going to see non-custodial wallets add KYC and KYB, which I think is kind of freaks out a lot of people in the crypto space because they're used to having some pseudo anonymity. But I think that you know as we progress, we're going to see more and more enforcement actions but we're also going to see a lot more reg tech you know where you you know kyc on your non-custodial wallet doesn't have to be something that exposes your privacy it could in fact be a really good fiat on ramp and off ramp to get your cash in get your cash out um you think about business you think about running a small business and accepting payments and you know the three percent you leave on the table with you know credit traditional credit cards all the trouble you have with chargebacks crypto solves a lot of problems but we're going to have to get through that that um that compliant portion we're going to have to embrace that and we're going to see more kucoin type actions you mentioned exchanges we won't so you said you won't name them well they're all going to have the same problem I guarantee it um so you know i think people need to recognize that this is kind of a a change of hands and you're going to see large entities banks coming in you're going to see large uh public companies coming into the crypto space and it's going to really change just because you have to KYC. It doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing, but you know, for us builders in the industry, we should work to continue to preserve people's privacy. Right. Um, so I, I say it's, it's good. Ultimately, I think KuCoin knew the trouble they were getting into. They kept serving us customers as you can read in the complaints. And it's kind of the same thing as Binance. And we'll see a lot more of this. The, the big shocker, I think for a lot of people will be that in the future, you'll have to KYC your non-custodial wallet. And I think a lot of people are upset about that, but you know, when it starts to come with really awesome features and you think about, you know, you couldn't open a bank account without giving them your information, your social security number, et cetera, because that's the law in the future, crypto should have all of that and beyond. And I think that's coming. Yeah, man, I, mean, I, you know, I, I, I hear you and I, and I'm with you, but I, I like anytime I hear a take, right. I always think of, like, I, I kind of think less of what I think, and I kind of think of what people would think. And, and I feel like that, like, there's two, or be two, you know, basic general schools of reacting to what you said. So school one agrees with you. We, you know, KYC isn't the end of the world. I mean, if you did anything of other kind of financial transmissions, I mean, that, that's kind of basic baseline stuff. But then there's school of thinking too, where, you know, crypto is supposed to be the reaction to, uh, you know, to the banking world. It's kind of like the, the cypherpunk movement, like the anonymity is a big deal. We want to stay decentralized. There's, this isn't true decentralization. Not that, 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 that. And, you know, and, and there is this kind of line that has to be drawn. And, and, and it's funny because in regards, um, you know, Marshall, in regards to the exchanges, the other exchanges that we're not going to name that could get targeted. I mean, to be fair, if, Say that say they're lax on you don't need to KYC on the exchange, but they explicitly say that hey we're not going to serve U.S. customers, but you could use it if you used a VPN. Like Marshall, can the DOJ still go after that exchange if they're saying hey we you know, absolutely you know if if I if I had a bar right. And it's on it's in the front of the bar. It says, you know, no persons under 21 allowed inside the bar. But then in the back of the building, I open up a special door that says, you know, underage club, right? Only to under 21 allowed, right? And I let them in through the back of the bar and then they can get served. And they say, well, you know, that's not an official entrance to the bar, right? So those, those, those kids that got alcohol don't count, right? And then one of them gets in their car and they crash and whatever, they get arrested and said, oh, I went through the back door of this bar. Well, you know what's going to happen, right? So, you know, saying that it's not enough to say, oh, well, it's a foreign IP, because this is the same thing that BitMEX did. If you remember, and Arthur Hayes, the disgraced BitMEX CEO, actually got up on stage and said, I could bribe a regulator with a coconut in Seychelles. 
And that was pretty much the end of Arthur Hayes in terms of being the CEO of BitMEX. If you serve U.S. customers, you have to follow U.S. laws, period. There's no, there's no secret trick around that or anything like that. And, and I would encourage crypto companies to go above and beyond because as a crypto company, you kind of have to. You're, you're outside of the traditional financial system. You have newer risks and you know, emerging regulation. I think it's, it's smart to go above and beyond. But you know, also as a technology company, you don't want to hinder your users so much that it's you know, incredibly painful to use. So you think about like when people were you're drawing on a piece of paper, the exchange name, holding up to their face, that's, that should go away. We should build better technology than that. That sucks, right? I should just be able to kind of face ID my way through any sort of verifications. When I go to sign up for something, I don't want to have to type out all this information every time and snap my passport. I just want a face ID, like Apple login. And as we get closer to that, it's going to get better and better and better. Yes, you know, the government will know who you are. Yes, uh, the exchange is kind of monitoring all these things. But if your grandmother got on one of these platforms and lost her life savings, wouldn't you be happy if she could get it back? Or if there was some recourse or, you know, that's, I think, where we're going. I still believe that blockchain should be permissionless. You can't enforce KYC at the chain level. But the thing is, the operators, the people that are providing it, are going to have to comply with these laws, right? So ultimately, I think that we just have to look at how normal money works and how crypto works. And we have to make the best experience for the customer so it's smooth, so it's easy. But at the same time, you know, we want our industry to evolve. We don't want to live in the wild, wild west of crypto forever. We want to evolve. We want to, we want to become better than the existing financial system. How do we do that? We've got to go above and beyond. So that's my message. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you. I, I'm with you. I, I just do feel like, you know, I know that there are exchanges. There are exchanges out there that say we don't, you know, we're not going to accept U.S. people. And I don't feel like they're the bar with the back door open. I feel like the U.S. users are breaking through the window. You know, so it, it's almost if an exchange, if you're VPNing into an exchange, that should maybe consider that if, if, if like you're breaking the law by doing that, maybe that should be like at the risk of the person VPNing in and not the exchange itself if they're trying to not provide a service to U.S. users, you know? Well, the exchange, so the, so here's the kind of the catcher, right? So the exchange needs to do everything it can to verify who you are, right? So it's going to take some form of uh, what we call, um, you know, just like a uh, photo ID, right? You have to have some sort of physical document. Um, and then we're going to match your face to that document, hopefully using some sort of biometric so you can't, you know, have one guy holding up some random person's license and get through. Now, if you don't do any of that, and your only filtering is to look at GOIP and to see, okay, they're from the U.S., that's not enough. So that's deficient. And, you know, the exchanges, they know that. So if, if someone, like you said, goes really out of their way, they steal someone's account, the exchange, to them it looks normal, it's normal IP range logging in, but it's actually someone who bought a hacked account or stolen account or something, that's an edge case where I don't think, you know, the exchange, as soon as they find out about it, they should report it. But, you know, they can't, you can't catch everything all the time. So it is possible, like you said. But that particular user, it's not as simple as, like you said, like they just switched, uh, you know, to a VPN or something. If that's the case, then it's deficiency on the exchange side, on the, on the um, counterparty side. But if it's an individual using hacked and stolen accounts, then, yeah, that's probably its own little separate case, right? Yeah, for sure. I just know, like... You know, I'm I'm a I'm a day trader. I'm a day trader. Uh, I have I have a Plow ID. I, I I run VPNs. Like you know, I I do it all. You know what I mean? But you know, if you want to have access to certain to certain projects and be able to leverage trade certain projects on exchanges where there's um, liquidity, I mean, a lot of people will kind of bend over backwards to make that happen. And it's, it's certainly an eye opening conversation. And 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 to be honest, Marshall, like uh, overall, I I do agree with you. Um, I, I feel like, you know, the, the, the window of pulling off the, the shenanigans day traders like me are pulling off. I, I feel like that window is likely closing. Uh, we got FOMO Bull Club with our hand up. Just so you all know, FOMO Bull Club, we will be having them on to do, um, a pitch or apparel. Basically in the second half of the show, they will do a 90 second pitch 
and we will you know, ask them questions about their project. But for now, FOMO Bull Club, any um, um, idea about you know what we're talking about right now? You have uh, you have a take on this? Yeah, definitely, AJ. And and hey, thanks for for having us again, man. I uh, hope I uh, hope all the day trading and trading a bunch of different meme coins has been working out well for you. Um, it's it's been kind of, it's been kind of crazy, right? What's been happening with all these pre sales that have been popping off, but um, you know the the way the way that I see it, and being a, a student of history and everything, um, I mean, I want to see our space mature, but I want to see it mature in a way that can absolutely be so much better than the traditional financial systems that. Satoshi was fighting in the beginning, right? And, and that, that is the core of why we're here and why we're pushing for decentralization and sovereignty over our own money and our own financial destiny. I mean, the reason that a lot of these regulations are coming into place is because the big man wants their cut, right? They want the cut. They want to take as much as they possibly can from every single one of us all around the world. Every single government does, right? They want to tax us. And so is there a way that we can be able to have it be that we can break away from that mold and still be able to play, um, you know, with the regulations, but not, I, I, I don't, I don't want to see it to the point where governments can, can literally control every little aspect of crypto. I don't want to see that. Because, I mean, that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm in this space, and so many of us are, and I'm sure people that are listening right now. I mean, 100,000%. I mean, that's when I said, like, there's two, two schools of thinking. One school of thinking that's completely okay with KYC, and the other school of thinking that would rather die before crypto becomes... Uh, tr the traditional legacy, you know, the more the legacy world gets involved with crypto, the more like it it will become. And, you know, there are obviously people out there that, you know, this, like you said, this is the reason we get into crypto. You know, I, I, I grew up going to punk rock shows and in the world of finance, you know, crypto is the most punk rock thing there is. And, you know, and I, I, I'd like it if it stays that way, at least to, to some degree. And it's totally interesting. Before I pass the, the mic to, um, to canine, canine finance from a bull club, you were talking about about uh, some pre-sales, uh, got any alpha? What, what have you been looking at in terms of in the pre-sale world? Well, I mean, I you know, I've just been watching these meme coins, right? That are racing like 60, 68 million or two hundred million, and it's just it's just wild, uh, you know, what what's happening there. And I I think it's because um, you know. <laughs> Those of us that are in the meme coin space were absolutely addicted to trading meme coins. I mean, I'm addicted to trading meme coins. I've been trading meme coins for four years now. And, um, and, and so we want to find those ways that we can potentially maybe create a potential for more success for that project. And so some, you know, some of the idea around these major pre-sales is like, hey, if I put in you know, X, Y, Z amount of money and a bunch of other people are, I mean, the liquidity is going to, could be absolutely ridiculous. And also the team has more to work with so that they can build out this whole vision of what they want this meme coin to be with the community. Right. And so I think, um, I think we're going to see more of that. And, and we're also, I, I mean, I know that we got a segment coming up here ab about us, but I think you're going to see more and more meme coin launch pads that are, that are coming up because of, you know, this having, you know, b better checks and balances in place for, for being able to trade these meme coins because, and, and create them even because, uh, you know, <laughs> if, if you've got the, if you've, if you've been bit by the meme coin bug, you're going to keep going for, you know, you if you've had that moment where you've had a 10 times or a 20 times, 50 times, a hundred times or a thousand X, right? You're always going to be thinking in the back of your head, which, when is the next one or where is the next one and how am I going to find it? And so that's, uh, that's one thing that we're definitely creating with the FOMO bull club, you know, meme point launch pad. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, I mean, that, that almost like kind of ties back into the original conversation. Like, you know, I, I, I Kay and I, and I will get to you, but I, I like Marshall, I, I want your take on this because you have a really, you know, kind of well-rounded, uh, you know, pretty pragmatic 
approach to uh, you know to, to regulations and, and you have a re- like I said you have a really level headed take like you know what would the DOJ say about you know any I mean not like calling out from a bull club or anything but just like launch pads in general the meme coin world like like is does the D- does the DOJ hate this or or is there a way we can all coexist well, I think the you know the oh, I'm I'm a fan of uh, meme coins. I I don't I'm not like deep into all these different meme coins, but I guess uh, short s- synopsis you could say that I I believe that all meme coins can become dreams of communities and can become more than just a meme. You know, it starts with a meme like Doge, right? Um, and hopefully, meme coins become more than just a joke. That's kind of the magic of them, right? Um, when they're just a thing, then it's, you know, to me, it's like, whatever, it's kind of a joke, but when it actually becomes a community, you actually build things around, it becomes a real blockchain or, you know, smart contract or something like that. It's, or DAO. That's interesting to me. I think in terms of the regulation around it, if fraud takes place, if somebody launches a meme coin and they, you know, quote unquote rug it or, you know, um, you know, the, the whole point of it was created for some founder to just get in and get out and make another one and make all these copy clone meme coins, then I think there might be a problem, right? Um, I, you know, the question comes about, about fair launch, uh, and things like that and, uh, issuance of, uh, tokens, you know, what's the format for that in EU? We have, uh, Mika, right? Which is giving a lot of clarity, but unfortunately in the US, we don't have anything like that yet. So, um, I think that, you know, in general, when it comes to the criminal enforcement, like Department of Justice, they're looking at fraud and they're looking at people evading the laws in a, you know, like a criminal way. Um, I think a lot of, there's a lot of big moon coins out there that, you know, they don't have that problem, right? They've been going for a long time. Um, and, you know, you don't have that issue, but you do have, you know, in the world of meme coins, you do have a lot of scam. Uh, I think the FOMO Bowl was saying it took a while to get a platform that could kind of, you know, police these meme coins because there are a lot of scams, right? And so for those scams, I think that's that's where that comes in, right? Um, but yeah, ultimately, regulation needs to evolve. And, uh, you know, how, how does how is a new cryptocurrency created, right? And I think when it comes to meme coins, there's so many of them and they're so quickly created. I think it's it's overwhelming, you know, for regulators to look at, but um, there should be a fair way to do it. And as long as there aren't issues of fraud or theft or anything like that, then, you know, I don't think that they are probably looking at it like that. But, um, you know, every now and then there are, right? And you look at like the case of Luna, and it was, it was propped up on this thing called Anchor Protocol, and it was deceptive, right? So they went after that. But, um, you know, if you have, you have uh, Dogecoin or Shiba Inu or you have some sort of meme community that's become more than that, it's a real community, then no, that's a real decentralized cryptocurrency, right? Yeah, no, I'm completely with you. I agree. I feel like there completely should be a, a, a fair way to do this and that the world can coexist. It's just, you know, the, some, of the, some of the ideas kind of clash together sometimes. And I'm just like, well, if they feel this way about this thing, wouldn't they feel this way about that thing? And that's kind of when my the gears in my brain start spinning. So, yeah, good take. Good take. We have uh, Canine Finance has had their hand up for a long time. It must be tired by now. Joe, I will get to you. But uh, Marshall, thank you for that take. Really pragmatic take as always. K9, what do you got? What are your thoughts? Hey, uh, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of K9. Um, I heard some discussion regarding SHIB, um, some discussion regarding exchanges, and think that we're probably a really good um, uh, project to be kind of speaking on that behalf. So like we are a official SHIB project, and I'm the only uh, SHIB development advocate. Um, and I think existentially, if you look at why people use exchanges in the first place, SHIB is actually a very good example of this. So there's 1.8 million holders that are on chain for SHIB and best estimates is that there's probably five to eight X other holders that are living on exchanges. And, and why are they using those exchanges? It's, it's really because people who are new to crypto and meme coins and SHIB in general can be a conduit for people to get in for the first time. And they're using exchanges because it feels safe to them. They have a way to recover their password. There's a company that they feel that they can go after if they they lose that password or they can always access those coins. But as a community, what we know is that with the downfall of 
FTX and Celsius and all of these exchanges who were offering um, what they were calling DeFi yield on their platform and offering people 5%, but then going and doing those DeFi actions on their own, there is a vulnerability there. And we're making it so that people do feel safe. They, I think the United States government is pushing people to use a lot of these offshore products um, to access liquidity. So um, I think the way to make people safer is really to bring in better technologies in, in DeFi um, to make it easier for people to, to use these products and feel safer. Um, but at the same time, stop pushing things offshore. Um, build things like Marshall was saying, where uh, people can use technology easier. They can KYC with their non-custodial wallet. They can use these DeFi products on-chain themselves in a safer manner. And I think that's a, a combination of not only just the UI of these products and making it easier, like Marshall said, to not just take a photo of your identification and put it on chain, but have these zero knowledge proofs where, where you can be identifying yourself on chain and you can share that information with people, but do it so in a non-custodial product where American consumers are not pushed to these offshore entities who are operating in, in jurisdictions like that. Yeah, I mean, that's a fair take. If there's plenty of places to do it, to get the coins you want, have access to the things you want here, we wouldn't have to do the whole file ID, run VPNs. I mean, I, I completely agree with you. That's a completely fair take. We got Joe with his hand up. Joe, what do you got, bro? Yeah, no, uh, more so to the what topic you have brought up. Like private sales, I think that meta is kind of dying down. Um, I did get involved in some. I'm excited for one that comes out tomorrow, which is Temple. Uh, as for memes and fair launches, look, a lot of these tokens that did well, uh, the founder got out of the way, right? Whether it was Bitcoin or Doge or Pepe. Um, and now with the fair launches, it's kind of like it's prefabricated to, to behave that way, right? Where, you know, they're rescinding the contract or the, the founder doesn't have much of a percentage or, or whatever it may be. It's almost like, okay, this is what we know works. Let's replicate that and make that happen. The, the issue is, is like the community really rallied behind something because they really believed in it from the beginning. And then when the founder gets out of the way, that community winds up growing. Here, I feel like what's happening is there's chains that are using it for marketing purposes and VC, chains and VCs that are using what I call mascot tokens for their chains. And then you have memes that at the moment are kind of like a casino where you're running from one token dumping it when you can move on to the next one and either you're part of that crew or you're not that knows which one's the next ones everyone's jumping into um i don't know how long they're gonna last it kind of feels like i don't know if you remember that some websites had this thing where you could bet whether the price was going to go up or down and it would be like super leveraged but it would only last like a minute it's kind of what it feels like at the moment for a lot of the meme projects I do believe in meme tokens that actually uh, have a history. People got behind because founder got out of the way and the community decided to rally together. Things like Pepe and the Pepeverse, uh, things like Doge, um, Shib. Like, those are real meme projects. The other ones, I don't know what they are yet. I think it's too new for us to really know what they are, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know... I feel like you really summed it up there, and that's kind of like, you know, I, I always kind of talk about, I talk on my show personally, not to talk about myself too much, but I always kind of talk about, like, the styles of people's trading. Like, when someone says they're in crypto or they trade crypto, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, are you are you leverage trading? Are you yield farming? Are you a breakout trader? Or like, you know, like, what style are we talking here? And, you know, like, meme coins, whatever. And I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends, a lot of my, my, my fellow DGENs, you know, they, they, they spend a lot of time, you know, kind of searching, uh, you know, Reddit and Twitter and, and all these places to find, like, that next coin that's about to thousand x like a bird eye and stuff like that and 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 to be honest with you like i have personally have never been the kind of person to just be like oh like this project that's launching tomorrow i'm just gonna throw 10 grand at it and hope for the best like that's never really been my style I, i've always kind of been a person like once there's a project that's established and is gaining a community, like, I'll jump in from when it's in the top 300 until it gets in the top 100. Like, you know, and uh, if there's, you know, a lot of liquidity 
on on leverage platforms for projects like with projects like Shiba, projects like Dogecoins. Like I like I'm a, I'm a like more traditional type trader, so I would rather find the projects that that are that have a lot of attention, have a lot of liquidity, and then trade from there. But am I going to catch that? You know, day one to day five pump. No, I, I'm not. And then, you know, that's not my style of trading, but that is some other people's style of the trading. And that, you know, that's why we all learn from each other. And it is really interesting to see, like, you know, how it varies in between. We got Plasma with his hand up. Plasma, what do you got? Uh, can I ask you yeah, first? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Before Plasma yeah, go ahead. Start. yeah, I'm wondering, I'm wondering, I don't know how big you are into NFTs, but I'm wondering how much of this is basically. You know, people realizing you don't need the NFTs to get in the Discord and belong to it and prove you belong to a community and get alpha and get whitelist for other things. Kind of like what typically happens in NFTs. I'm wondering how much of this is like, I don't need NFTs to do that. I can do that with a, with a token, right? And I'm wondering what that means for NFTs. And I, this is actually a question. I don't have a thesis but very curious about it. Sorry, Plasma, I jumped in ahead of you. No, I, I mean, that's a really good point. And, you know, my like I like NFTs. I hold NFTs. Uh, most of the time when I get an NFT, like Sappy Seals, for instance, I have Sappy Seals because I, I like being in that community. Uh, every time I've ever have got an NFT, personally, it has been for access to a community. Have I flipped NFTs here and there? Yes, but I also feel this. I feel like the worst thing that ever happened to your gains, whether crypto or NFTs, was being a community member. That is the worst thing that ever happened to your gains ever. And and I and I always say that because you know people what people do, whether it's crypto or NFTs, they fall in love with their coins. They fall in love with the project. They like you know like identifying like with whatever the you know the Solana soldiers or the Link Marines or whatever community it is. And I and I you know I I hope that you know kind of covers some base of your question there, Joe, because I I am of kind of you can get the alpha you want without spending $50,000 to get access to one discord. You know, there, there are, there are a lot of viable options to, uh, to educate and, and to get alpha that don't involve, um, you know, dropping, um, a bunch of money on a, on a blue, on a blue ticket. You know what I'm saying? All right. That answers your question. Yeah, I just, I made a lot, I made, I just, like, I have Bitcoin bandits, I made more just being part of that community than probably any any other one, so it's like, there is a benefit to holding it, like, there is, uh, you know, access to things you wouldn't have if you weren't part of that, I'm just wondering how much of that is going to shift to tokens, really. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword because, you know, there obviously are scenarios where, you know, it's completely profitable to remain a community member. And then there, I feel like there is a point in time with, with every project or NFT or crypto where you have to say, like, you know what, I I set a goal before I got in this project. I've achieved that goal and I'm going to I'm gonna take my money and go home. I mean, as a trader, I mean, that that's what you do. You know, anytime, I, even if I buy, uh, you know, $500 of Avalanche on Coinbase, before I buy that avalanche, I write down, okay, it's March 26th, I'm buying $500 of avalanche, it's currently at this price, and once it gets to that price, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my money and walking home, and I feel like, you know, just really uh, pen and papering your goals and sticking to them, regardless of what type of investment it is, has, has been, you know, the best. What, what happened to me in bull runs in the past is I would just throw a couple thousand at this project and a couple thousand at that project. And I was just kind of throwing money at letters and I never really thought about what my goals are. And people that have, you know, you know, small portfolios or large portfolios, doesn't matter. But if you have a bunch of crypto, whether NFTs or crypto, uh, and you have not written down, okay, this is the point. This is how much money I want to make. This is my number. If you don't have that number, you really need to reconsider it because the, the, if you don't have that goal set, that's generally the people that ride it to the bottom because they don't know what they want. And uh, you know, I, I think you know, just being super upfront and honest with yourself about that is is the best way. No one ever went broke taking profits. So uh, my guy Plasma with his hand up. Sorry, we cut you off there, man. What do you got? Oh, good. I enjoy listening. Here's my take on regulations. We can't have people launching tokens. Let me first say, I'm usually heavily against regulations, but we cannot have people launching tokens and secretly sniping big percent of the supply then dumping on people while pumping the token. This is fraud, right? And there needs to be some regulation. At the same time, we can't limit experimentation. 
and new ways of launching tokens, basically. So the regulations can't just create like a set templates on how tokens can be launched. There needs to be some room for experimentation. Maybe there will be two types of token launches. One where people get doxed and registered with a regulatory body, and another where it's the Wild West and people know what they're getting into. Yeah, that's my take basically. And you know, I usually focus on tokens where the devs have like no influence anymore. And that's one way to go. Yeah, that's it basically. That's my take. No, I, I think that's a completely fair and pragmatic take. 100%. 100%. Thanks for your contribution. All right. So we are approaching you know, about that time of the show here. FOMO and Bull with their hand up. But I think it's time to, to, to pivot to the pitch and peril segment of this show. What we're going to do, we're going to set the timer for 90 seconds here. FOMO Bull Club will have 90 seconds to give a pitch overview of their project. Uh, and then, you know, we'll ask them questions about it. And, and if you're a speaker on stage, please, I would uh, really appreciate it if we stayed on topic with FOMO Bull Club uh, once they start, one, after they do their pitch. So FOMO Bull Club, the floor is yours. 90 seconds. Go. Let's go. Let's go. So FOMO Bull Club, we're a multi-chain decentralized launchpad and liquidity hub for meme coins. Our members get to propose and vote on either the launch of new coins or the relaunch of existing meme coins with communities that want to revive themselves. Um, one of the unique value propositions of our launch pad is that our launches are fully automated, they're decentralized, they're community driven, and then we also immediately create liquidity farming LP staking from those particular meme coin launches. We are Currently going to be going live on the Polygon mainnet first, and then Solana will come next. We're going to be expanding to many different chains. We've been talking with tons of L1s and L2s about being a lightning rod for innovation, experimentation, and bringing meme coins to their chains. Um, we have a community sale that is coming tomorrow, and that's with our exclusive partner, Engine Starter. So our community sale uh, will be kicking off, and those that those that have member NFTs, they get 24, act, 24 hour access to the sale before anyone else. Now, one of the most amazing things about our projects, we've been just growing exponentially. We have 275,000 people on Twitter, 40,000 Telegram, 60,000 Discord, and we're already getting ready to list on ex major exchanges with our TGE that will be on April 14th. And that is uh, Bitmart, Mexi, L Bank, BitGet, and we're also in talks right now by Bit. Awesome! Sounds like you already have done a very, very good job. Oh, excuse me, good job getting the ball rolling there, uh, especially with the accessibility on major exchanges. Um, you know, so so as a meme, so say I, you know. I'm a meme project, right? Uh, the the AJ AJ meme, and I and I, you know, want to lose, want to use your launch pad. Uh, like, what do I do, and and why would I side? Why would I go with from a bull club? So this is this is a great question, and this is a question we're getting from many communities and, and different teams. Well, the the biggest uh, value for being a part of our launch pad is is the amount of KOLs that we're working with the amount of reach that with our different partners, the different utility stacks that you get access to by being a partner with us. So one one thing that, that I wanted to uh, talk about because Joa was asking a question like what's going to happen with NFTs in the future? And that's something that you know, we've we've been racking our heads, you know, about uh, with, at FOMO Bull Club quite a bit and trying to figure out all these different new innovations, kind of like the, the bleeding edge of the tech in the space right now. And one of those partners that we partnered with is, is actually called uh, Bully MFT, and they created the ERC-69 standard. And what that is, it's a, it's a it's a wrapping and unwrapping mechanic for tokens to create MF NFTs, which are meme fungible tokens, which are NFTs. And so it makes all NFTs actually liquid and then creates all kinds of new types of uh, dynamic price structures and new economic models for NFT projects and founders themselves. So 
so Joa, definitely be looking into what's happening there with the liquid NFT side of things, the hybrid NFTs that are they're really just getting started. In fact, Bully just uh, launched their MVP on seven chains just a week ago. So you're going to be seeing a lot more of, of what they're doing. And every one of the meme coins that launches on our launchpad will have access to that tech, which is really exciting. And, and so that's, that's another thing that they'll get access to. Also, mentorship. So we have a whole entire cadre of different advisors, different um, you know, founders that have been successful. Myself, my name is Jordan Charters. I'm one of the co-founders of Polydoge, which is the most successful meme coin on all Polygon. So I'm there to you know, help advise with the different meme coin teams and, and help them understand how to build community, how to use utility, how to do experiential marketing, guerrilla marketing, all those different things. So that's another thing that they get access to. And for them to be able to propose uh, a meme coin launch, they do have to have some skin in the game. So they will have to hold some FMBC, you know, and and also, you know, be a part of the community to be able to put proposals forward for different meme coins that they want to launch or that the community wants to launch. And then the community that we're curating can really just take the reins and say, okay, we're going to completely back this project, you know, whether that's 20,000 or 30,000 people. And they're like, hey, let's, Let's create, you know, a really amazing movement with this particular meme coin. So those are some of the major benefits that you have by coming to FOMO Bull Club to launch your coins. Awesome. Really interesting answer. So you said something in there how you're kind of creating like a new token standard. Yeah, like, it, like how is that sim similar to what we've seen, uh, you know, I think like last month with the ERC 404s and like, and what is like, you know, unique about that standard? <laughs> Yeah, I won't. I won't take too much time on this, uh, you know, sure, because sure. because it's it's you know one of our, our partners, but um, but with the ERC sixty nine standard, so the the creator of that is a gigabrain dev that's been a dev since ninety one, been creating all kinds of you know everything in Web two, and then came over to Web three and is built you know for probably like. 600 plus teams or something like that. But he looked at ERC 404 and he saw the security concerns. He saw that there wasn't the simplicity in the contracts, that there were easier ways to create this type of utility without kind of taking a, you know, a square peg and trying to put it into a round hole, which is what ERC 404 is, right? Being an ERC 20 and also an NFT at the same time. So with this new dynamic, you can actually be able to take any token that is existing, any NFT that is existing, and use this tech. So that's another big uh, you know, advantage over ERC-404, where 404, you have to create new contracts, new liquidity, new all kinds of you know, different things to, to be able to even have a successful ERC-404 project. But with ERC-69 standard, any project that is currently out there can use this tech. And it's, and it's super smooth, super simple, and any Solidity dev that is even, just even knows how to work with basic contracts can actually use the ERC-69 standard. Wow, that is very interesting. I like that you can do it with any pre-existing project. That, that is definitely a big change up from what I've heard about before. I have one more question, then I'll open it up to the other speakers. You know, we did have like a conversation about, about like KuCoin and fair launches and, you know, and some regulation stuff in, in this conversation. Great conversation, by the way. So I want to ask, you know, what kind of safeguards are in place to ensure, you know, a, a fair distribution of meme coins? So one of the main safeguards is the way that we distribute those, uh, you know, meme coins, um, you know, to the to different stakers of the liquidity. Another another big thing is that we renounce every single contract. So every contract that is created is renounced. It's not owned by anyone. They can't just, you know, do it. Obviously, the community can kind of decide on different things that we could augment to contracts and, and changing things over time because it, it is important that you can have, uh, you know, communities that can pivot, right? And so um, I, I, think that, I think that that's one of the, the main things that helps to safeguard and create, 
create create a place where there you feel more safe to trade meme coins right on on the FOMO uh, bull club launch pad because we're making it so that uh, none of these teams can actually rug none of the communities can actually rug and that there's uh, you know and that there's not a th there's not one person that's just holding all the all the bags. I like to think of it like this, you know. Um, I was thinking of an analogy the other day because in my younger years, I got into MLMs. I was I was in the multi level marketing. And I got pretty high up in in those different things and saw the structure and how everything works. And I, a lot of these, you know, meme coins that launch, it's like it's like they're an MLM, right? It's like they're a multi level marketing company. You know, they're trying to get their community to help sell the product, sell the brands, right? And and do all this hype stuff. But what ends up happening uh, when there's too much distribution on the top, right? Because it's basically it's a basically like a pyramid, you know, of, of value, right? Within MLMs and, and some MLMs, I'm not knocking on all of them. There's some that are actually good out there, but the vast majority... You know, it's it's the people at the top that are sucking the life out of everyone on the bottom, right? And all the way up to, to you know, to uh, to the top of the pyramid, right? So, um, so you know, we make sure that that structure is 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 not there, right? With the launches, and also because it's community driven, we can change up anything that the community decides to do. You know, with different ways that we do the LP and different ways that we, uh, you know, maybe we even invest tokens depending on how much of a, of a raise for a particular meme coin happens, right? I mean, if there's like a meme coin launch that raises 10 or 20 million, right? We definitely will want to have those safeguards in place to have a nice, steady, you know, linear distribution. Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely glad that you've thought this well through it. And if people want to hear that, so they feel safe using it. I mean, that, that's amazing. We have uh, David 10X. I haven't heard from you this whole space. David, how you doing? And uh, what is the question for FOMO Bull Club? Hey, do, doing great, AJ. And honestly, I've, I've been listening to all of you legends up here this whole time. And, you know, finally just got to, got, thought of a, a good question to throw over to Jordan. But you know, everything that's happening right now in with meme coins, like, it's super fast-paced, but uh, a lot of people, like, it, it's hard to imagine that this is going to be sustainable and continue on like this forever. A lot of people are saying, you know, meme coins are great because there's no expectations, there's not really any utility behind it, but is that something that you see going to continue, or do you think, uh, you know, maybe even platforms like what you have, like, is there going to be any sort of hyper casual games that people might like with meme coins or maybe some of these new AI storytelling, um, you know, protocols and companies getting into the space. Like I, I, me personally, bro, I would love to see something where the community can contribute together and write some lore for saying Pepe. Like that would be super lit. Oh, you know, her, bro. <laughs> I love, I love that. You, I love that you name dropped that. <laughs> Thanks, man. I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of, of Say It Pepe. It's Pepe a Polygon, but um, no, it's exactly. So th that's that's one of the things that's so amazing about what we can do with meme coins. It is the place where we can experiment the most in this space, and so you know we see it as. There are going to be different camps. There'll definitely be camps of those meme coins that are just, you know, pure community. It's about the meme, and, and that's literally it, right? And there's no promises, no utility, nothing, except the community. Community is huge, uh, you know, huge utility, right? But as for this major shift within using different utilities and building out brands, I, I like to think of meme coins as like entertainment companies, right? So they're like potential entertainment companies. They're, they're places where we can create multimedia experiences. We can do films and games and anything that, you know, really touches all the senses within, uh, you know, within those brands. And so I think we're going to see that maturity just continue to develop, and uh, and and that and that's something that 
we wanted to absolutely make sure we had with FOMO Bull Club in the beginning is that we have a whole entire list of, of utilities that we can tap into, you know, gamification and NFT fi and all these other, you know, amazing things that, that, the brilliant minds have been coming up with in the blockchain space so that we can, you know, really empower those communities and those meme coins. Now they can decide what they want to do. If they don't want to have those utilities and they just want to be, you know, that this is just specifically about, uh, you know, a, a bunny coin and, you know, all the lore that, that happens around that, which, which honestly, if, if you go back, like, Storytelling is, is such a is such a key and critical important part of building a brand and building a community experience. And so I think I think we're gonna see a lot more of that and especially using AI tools to make that happen. Awesome, awesome. Uh Joa or or Marshall, you have any questions for Film Mobile Club? Yeah, what do you think about this whole pre-sale? meta and are you guys doing anything there and how much longer you think it'll last so you know i think i think that you're gonna see it i don't think it's going away honestly i don't think it's going away it's it, it'll be another sector of meme coins it'll be another sector of okay these are meme coins that raised xyz amount of money and then also the the other thing with fomo bull club is yes, we we are raising liquidity for launches, right? We are raising for these different launches, um, and there'll be different dynamics in place according to what type of launch we want to do with a particular meme coin. It's really a lot of it's up to the community to decide in the teams that are working with us on the platform. Awesome. Awesome. Well, from everybody, I do want to say that, you know, there's over, you know, 3,600 people in this space. Thank you all so much for being here. Definitely go give some love to FOMO Bull Club and everything they're doing. They got a lot of news, you know, I just, you know, especially today, tomorrow, this next week is really big for them. So definitely go give them some support. And at the minimum, give them a follow on Twitter. Twitter. I'm sure they'd really appreciate it. My final question before we close here today, FOMO Bull Club is, you know, where do you see yourself in five years? And, you know, what's the goal and how do you get there? Well, the goal the goal is to is to have FOMO Bull Club be a name that is recognized for transparency, for safety, for uh, you know meme coin culture, and that is solidified within just about every blockchain that matters, every L one and L two. And another thing that we definitely see us uh, you know being as is as a hub for. Um, you know, hel helping to amplify different projects, not just meme coin projects, like, you know, being able to have a huge multimedia base of utility and GameFi and, uh, you know, social uh, platforms and social capital and reach that we can really support anybody that we believe in. And then also being a voice for education and protecting investors in retail and teaching them about you know how to navigate this space and and also being a, a voice for decentralization as the as the different regulations are definitely coming you know to to bear down on us um now you know trying to be able to do that in a way where we can still keep to the decentralized roots but also work with these major entities, right? And and who knows? You know, maybe there'll be a whole nother way of looking at how economies work and, and how, um, you know, how societies work, how communities work from the different things that we do together over the next five years. That's what my dream is, uh, personally, is to, it is to see, uh, you know, a whole new type of, renaissance within the way that we do things because there's uh there's a saying there's a saying that says the greatest evil comes from um following the traditions of the fathers right and so i mean obviously there's good traditions and then there's bad traditions and there's and i'm sure everyone that's listening here can think to themselves throughout their life when they 
thought that something was so true and so right and so, you know, like this is the way it is. And then later having that reality shattered and paradigm shifting. So we would love to see this massive paradigm shift and be a part of all of it happening. Awesome. Awesome. Well, from a book club, thank you so much for coming on today's show. Got a lot out of it. You are in my follow. I'll definitely be, you know, paying attention over the next week, next month, see how it goes. I re really wish you the best. I mean, I'll definitely check it out. It feels like, you know, we need, we need platforms like this, especially this is, we've certainly seen a meme season here in the past, you know, even before a couple of months, meme season has never really stopped. To be honest, there's been you know meme traders uh, posting positions every day for the past couple of years, and it's amazing to see that. And we need platforms like this to continue it uh, in the in the most productive way possible. So, really, I do appreciate you guys coming on the show today. Thank you so much to so everybody in the audience. Make sure you go give them a follow. Check out they got a lot of news going on this week. I'd really like to thank uh, them and all the speakers as well. David, Marshall, Joa, Plasma, K9. You guys are all amazing. To everybody in the audience, make sure you give this speakers a follow as well uh this has been a really really great show i got a lot of, lot out of it personally myself but um that is it for today's show my name is aj Wright's crypto hope to catch you all tomorrow or the next day get rich or get wrecked have a safe rest of your day later